Okay, so I'm going to show you how to set up RPCS3. So I did a video on this about a month and a half ago, and it's a little bit outdated now. So what I'm going to do is do a brand new one. So in this setup guide, I'm going to show you where to download the emulator itself. I'm also going to show you how to install the firmware, how to install a game, uh, get your best video settings and graphic settings for it, how to configure your controller. So there's going to be a lot in this video. So if you've not yet liked and subscribed, like and subscribe, and also hit notifications. I'm forever uploading emulation retro content and yes playstation 3 is actually considered retro nowadays which is a little bit scary uh, by far one of my favorite consoles <laughs> So let's actually go and download the firmware for this first. So link's going to be in my description. And this is official PlayStation website. So I'm going to just go to download PS3 update. And if you see this at the top, it can't be downloaded. It's not secure, blah, blah, blah. Just ignore this and keep it. It's obviously from Sony and it's a trusted download and next up, we're going to need to download the emulator itself, obviously. So this is RPCS3, and it's just an awesome, awesome emulator. I love this one. Uh, the good thing about this, it supports a lot of games nowadays. So all you need to do is just rip your game using a Blu-ray disc player, and uh, you can play some of these games in up to 4K quality. Uh, but for this, I'm going to use Windows. I'm going to just go to Download. And this is then going to download into a WinRAR file. You might have WinZip or 7-Zip installed. So I'm going to just open up what I've just downloaded, which is the RPCS3 emulator. What I'm going to do is just create a new folder for this. And I'm going to simply call this one PS3 emulator. Or you can name this whatever you want. And what I'm going to do is just drag all the contents from this zip file inside of this newly created PS3 emulator folder I've just made. Okay, so once you've extracted that, we no longer need this zip file, so you can just delete that one. And next up, we're gonna need that firmware file, which we just downloaded from the PlayStation website. And just to put all this together, I'm going to put this PS3 firmware inside of my PS3 emulator. So everything's all in one folder now. So next thing I'm going to do is just open up rpcs3.exe and this is going to bring you into the emulator. So this is part of the configuration process. Uh, so we can choose to create a desktop shortcut and also create a start menu shortcut. Uh, that's entirely up to you. I'm not going to do this for now for this tutorial, but obviously if you select create desktop shortcut, it's going to be easier for you to access rather than going into your C drive or wherever it's installed. So once you've done that, we're going to go to I have read the quick start guide and do not show again. And of course, this information here is just a little disclaimer and it says does not condone piracy. Uh, you must do dump your own games. And of course, that's what I've done. Uh, go to continue. Now, once we've done this part, it's going to say at the bottom here, Sys missing firmware. Now, if we go to file, we're going to install that firmware we just downloaded. So file, go down to install firmware. And from here, I've just dragged my firmware inside of my PS3 emulator folder. So we got it right here at the bottom and it says ps 3 updatepup So double left click on this one. So don't show again. And this process now is going to take a little bit of while it's compiling PPU modules. So it's just gathering information and it's doing this and that in the background. So leave this to run and don't close it down. So while that's doing what it's doing, I'm going to go back over to uh, the RPCS3 website. And if we go under compatibility list, we've got lots of different games here, which is fully playable. And the way to do this is if you go to the tabs at the top, uh, the green one just there, playable, that means your games uh, using RPCS3 can be played from start to finish. And like I said at the beginning of this video, there's a hell of a lot in there nowadays. If you go to the in-game, it means that some games in here will run, but they're not going to be able to be finished and they might break, you know, that type of thing. And obviously intro and loadable and absolutely nothing. Uh, there is no point in loading these games up whatsoever. Uh, if you want a really smooth experience, then obviously just go for the playable tab and you can source which game it is you want to play uh, through here. 
So, for example, my 007 game I'm going to be using in the setup guide works perfectly with RPCS3. And there it is. So, uh, both European and American versions of this disc runs just fine. Uh, my disc is European. So, I'm going to leave the link in my description for all this anyway. I'm going to close this down. And as we can see, this is still compiling PPU modules. So, just bear with it and just let it do its thing. Okay, so once that PPU process is finished, you're going to see a little bit of text at the bottom and it's going to say it's up to date and we've also got firmware version 4.90 installed. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually drop my game into this emulator. So like I've been saying, I've got 007 Legends on my desktop. I'm going to go to File, Add Games. And my game is located on my desktop and it's just here at 007 Legends. So I'm going to left click once on this to highlight it. Select folder and it now appears inside RPCS3. So let's just quickly boot this up. Now the first time around of loading up games, you're going to get a lot of this happening. Compiling PPU modules, uh, pipelines, that type of thing. And you're going to see all of this. So initially, when you boot up a game for the first time, prepare to wait a minute or two. And also, whilst you're playing the game, you'll notice that things lag. And there's also going to be a little window which appears at the bottom saying that it's saving shaders, that type of thing. But just let it do its course. What's happening is is that the emulator is kind of like saving all the graphics, what you see on the gameplay, and it's put them in, all into a folder. So your next time around to play in your PS3 game, all of that is going to be already loaded into RPCS3's cache. So you won't need to go through this process again. But once this is uh, finished doing what it's doing, I'm going to show you what I mean by this. <laughs> And as you've seen a minute ago, you see shaders loading. Uh, like I said, this is a one-time process. Okay, so that's some shaders loaded up, and as we can see, that's working. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually configure a controller. So I've got a PlayStation 3 controller, and I'm going to go to pads at the top just here. Under handlers, I'm going to find DualShock 3. Now this just here should automatically do this for me. So I don't need to configure any of these buttons just here. If you're using a different controller, uh, something like an Xbox 360 controller, just go to X input. And what you can do then is click on each one of these and correspond it with your controller. But for me, I'm going to just go to DualShock 3 and I'm going to go to save that. Uh, next thing I'm going to want to do is put an uh, update to this game. So I've got an update I want to install. If I go to File, I'm going to install Packages. And I'm going to find my update, which is located on my desktop. And this is uh, the 007 Legends update patch. Uh, do you want to install this package? Yes. And it just says that it's successfully installed. So all that's good to go. And now we've got the controller set up and we've got the update put in place. Let's just open this one up again. So we're back into the game with the update installed, which is the latest or the last update for 007 Legends. Okay, so as we've seen, the game is up and running just fine. I would bore you with some gameplay, but I'm sure you've seen all that before. Next thing I'm going to show you to do, you can actually make each game you install in RPCS3 customized. So, for example, if we right-click on my 007 Legends and go to Create Custom Configuration, rather than playing around with video settings and graphics settings in the main tab up here at the top, you can do this per game. So, for example, if I go to GPU, 
I can change the default resolution. Now, a lot of PlayStation 3 games were outputting to 720p. Uh, so this is why this is recommended 720p. However, under resolution scale, you can make this higher, but do this at your own risk. And just like RPCS3 itself, you're going to need a fairly decent computer, a decent processor and GPU to run a lot of these games. So, for example, we can crank this one up or we can attempt to crank it up to around 4K, which is 3840 uh, times 2160, and that's 4K. We've also got resolution scale. Personally, I'll just leave this one on default. And we've got scaling as well just here, which is almost like a filter. So if your computer supports Fidelity FX Super Resolution, then hit that one just there. If not, just leave it on bilinear. That should be fine. Uh, we also got anastrophic filtering just here, which also cleans up our games and takes away any pixelation you might see in it. Uh, now, aspect ratio, again, most PS3 games of this era were actually in 16 by 9 ratio. Uh, that was the era of HDMI after all, and things were moving on for 4 by 3 at that point. And we can also check game compatibility. So say you've got a lot of PlayStation 3 games on your computer and you just put them all into PS3. Uh, rather than go in and go into that link in my description, if we just right click on the game and go to check game compatibility, this will take us back to the RPCS3 website and it will be just here. So that's an easier way for you to get to it if needs be. And also if you right click on the game again, we can actually downloads compatibility database and as you can see just here at the end it's now updated so this is fully updated uh, with the latest compatibility of your games now sometimes and some games will require a different driver so i'm going to show you how to do this as well you can either right click on your game just here or you can do it it taps at the top but for this i'm going to just go to create custom configuration and gpu under render by default, it's OpenGL. If some games fail to boot, then just go to Vulkan if your computer supports Vulkan. And you can also change the way this is displayed. So, for example, if I put this to grid, then all your games is going to be in tile format going across left from right. But I think this looks pretty good in list personally. I hope you found this video pretty good. Like I say, hit notifications and subscribe for more emulation and retro content. I'm also on Facebook. TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. And also be sure to check out my new membership option for my channel. But until next time, stay retro.